Hi everybody, and welcome to another Firecast. User-generated content in games is all the rage with the kids these days. So much so that making it easy for your players to create and share content in your game might as well be table stakes. I'm going to show you how easy it is to host whatever content your users create in the cloud using cloud storage for Firebase, our powerful service for storing large binary objects like videos and screenshots. But first, I must create the greatest game the world has ever seen. I think that my game's going to be about capturing a photo and sharing it. So let's see, I'll create a scene, maybe add a script to rotate a node over time and make this rotate a camera. I'll also throw some cool cubes and boxes here. In the industry, we call this a gray box prototype. Let me just make sure this all works. I'll also throw in a button that says capture. Here, we'll capture a screenshot for great good. You may be wondering, hey Patrick, how do I capture a screenshot in Unity? This sounds like the greatest viral marketing scheme I've ever heard of. Well, that's an easy one. I'll create a new capture screenshot script. I'll make this an eye pointer click handler and make on pointer click start a coroutine. Then wait until the end of the frame, just to make sure everything has finished rendering. Then I just capture a screenshot with screenshot capture that capture screenshot as texture. I want to raise a Unity event with this texture 2D, so I'll define the event class at the bottom, add the on-screen captured event at the top of my file, and invoke it. I can easily show this in-game using a raw texture component, but I promised you that I could share this into the cloud somehow. Firebase just happens to have a product called Cloud Storage for Firebase. This lets you host any kind of binary content you want. Firebase's own Mecha Hamster sample actually uploads replay data here. This versatility is great for screenshots as well, or even animated GIFs. So first, make sure you've created a Firebase project and have properly initialized it. See this video, link in the description below, if you haven't done this yet. Then I'll go into my project and enable cloud storage. I'm going to make my storage bucket totally open by modifying the rules a little bit. So I'll click on rules and change allow read write to if true. I'll come in out the rest for now. So hold up, it's time for a quick security timeout. There's no secret code in your application that restricts access to your Firebase backend. The data in Google services.json or Google service info.plist is trivially retrievable by anyone inspecting your ship game. This means that if you leave rules open like this, literally anyone can store or retrieve anything in your cloud storage instance at your expense. That means that if you don't want hackers turning your cloud storage project to the latest where is repository, you're going to need to change these rules to literally anything other than what I've written here. Rules themselves are a complicated topic and way beyond the scope of this video, but your two best strategies will be to generally set allow write to false to turn most of your storage bucket into read only, then to integrate Firebase authentication to only allow users to write to user specific paths in your storage bucket. You can also put rules around file size, type, and basically be as specific as you possibly can. For further information, Check out this video on rules, link in the description below. Back onto integration. I'll put in the Firebase Cloud Storage SDK. Since I'm using Unity 2019, I'll use the plugin in the .NET 4 folder. As with any Firebase project, I need to decide how I'm going to initialize Firebase. Today, I'll just create a typical Firebase init script here. Go and make the async call and raise an event when it succeeds. Just drop this into the scene. And the only thing that's going to use Firebase is this capture screenshot button. So make it not interactable on load. Then when the Firebase init script raises the uninitialized event, I'll make it interactable. I'll test it real fast in the editor, but this should finish immediately in the editor. Now that I've laid the groundwork, I'll create an upload screenshot script. 
I'll create a public function called upload screenshot that takes the texture 2D from my capture screenshot script. I'll have this immediately kick off an upload screenshot coroutine just so I can perform asynchronous actions synchronously. Uploading this screenshot will be a three-step process. First, I need to create a storage reference. Second, I need to convert my screenshot's texture 2D into bytes to upload to the internet. And third, I need to add any metadata I think is relevant. So to start, what is a storage reference? Think of a reference as a sort of super path. Getting a reference doesn't actually do anything to your cloud storage instance. It's just a tool with which you can express your intent in a way that cloud storage understands. Some of the basic actions that you can perform with a reference are uploading data, downloading data, getting or setting metadata, and deleting data. And in case it isn't clear, since you can upload data, the path in your database represented by the reference doesn't have to exist when you create it. So to create a reference for my screenshot, I'll call storage.getReference. For now, I'm just going to want a random path to store it. So I'll use GUID.NewGUID. Now, I need some actual bytes to upload, which I can get with encode to ping. And finally, I create an upload task with put bytes async. Since I have a task, I can use wait until to wait for it to complete. If I want to handle any errors, I can check for task.exception to be non-null. I probably want to yield break here. At this point, I know that I've uploaded the data and I want to check that it worked. I can use get download URL async to get a URL from which I can download the data I've uploaded. I can just log this out. Let me hook up everything, add my script to the scene, hook it to the capture screenshots event, then run this real fast. Take a screenshot, wait for it to upload, and here I have this URL to check. If I open this in a web browser, I get the screenshot. Now a note about this URL. Firebase is a very web-friendly SDK, and this URL exists primarily so that web developers can add an image to an IMG tag in a website. Instead, you should use Gitbytes async to download a cloud storage file into memory, like this. I'm going to use long.max value for my maximum download size, which is basically a fancy way to say, I don't really care about the maximum size of this download right now. Gitbytes async downloads a file into memory, which means that your game will crash if the file is larger than the amount of free memory you have. You'll want to change this to a value more appropriate for your use case before shipping your game. For an image, you could use 4096 times 4096 times 4, since that's the largest texture many devices can load into VRAM. With that said, I can also verify that the upload worked by going into the Firebase console, finding the image, and inspecting it here. I can also add the new download URLs and revoke old ones. So if you do end up just sharing this out to the world, you're not entirely out of luck if you wanted to take it back. It just doesn't meet the strict security requirements we have for something like a unguessable Firebase dynamic link. Remember, I'm not done yet. I've created a reference and uploaded data, but I still need to add metadata. What is metadata anyway? Metadata, in the context of Firebase Cloud Storage, is just a set of textual string value pairs that you can associate with a storage reference can add metadata with a metadata changed object. There are some default pieces of metadata to fill out. Like I can say the content type is image ping so that web browsers know how to handle this like an image. I can also use the custom metadata field to add a dictionary of whatever I'd like. For instance, remember how my camera is rotating over time? I can just get the world transform and the world rotation of the camera and put it here. That way, I might be able to set up the scene to look like the one in the screenshot on another machine. Then I can add metadata just by modifying my put bytes async call. So let me run the game one more time, capture a screenshot, then run straight over to the Firebase console. If I find this screenshot, 
I can see that I now have all this super cool metadata. And that's really it. As I stated before, you definitely, definitely want to enable security rules again, especially if you're about to commit your project to GitHub after watching this video. And of course, a static screenshot itself might not be as interesting a viral marketing mechanic as I have led you to believe. There are plugins that make it easy to generate animated GIFs or movies, which would be way more entertaining content to throw out onto social media. And really, just any large pieces of binary data will do, from replays to custom levels to maybe machine learning data sets you've been using to replicate your star players. I'm not saying that you should do that, but I don't want to be on record trying to stop the singularity after the machines take over. I'd love to hear what you plan to make or what you would like to hear me talk about next. Either let me know in the comments below or tweeting at Puxor on the Twitter. See you next time.